uh, dear students let us start another topic that is general characteristics features of phylum echinodermata echinodermata is derived from greek to greek words echinos means hedgehog derma means skin uh, this is the picture of hedgehog it is a mammal so because the and this is the echinodermate because the outer appearance of sea urchin or the echinodermate is resemble with the hedgehog mammal that is having the spine so spiny appearance of the skin it resembles with the hedgehog so the name is so it literally means spiny or prickly skinned animals and it refers to the conspicuous spines these are the conspicuous spines possessed by their skin echinoderms constitute a major group of deuterostom invertebrates deuterostom you know the organisms in which the blastopore uh, becomes the anus it will not become the mouth rest all invertebrates you know before this that we have discussed till date up to mollusks they were proterostom whereas they are the deuterostoms and no onwards all the vertebrates were are also the deuterostoms and because this is the major phylum of the invertebrate having deuterostome nature and this phylum is best characterized and most distinct phyla of animal kingdom all these animals of echinodermates are exclusively marine no freshwater form is there and are among the most common and widely distributed of marine animals in the marine environment they are most widely distributed you will find echinodermates everywhere symmetry is radial you can see you can draw the radius and you can divide the body so symmetry is radial and always nearly always pentamerous because normally it has the five arms so because of this this it can be divided by five radii body is triploblastic having cilium it has a distinct oral surface and aboral surface like in this picture you can see the surface bearing mouth is called oral surface the surface bearing anus is called aboral surface so surface opposite to the oral is aboral surface they are moderate to considerable size but none is microscopic body shape either round to cylindrical or you have the star shaped body with arms radiating from the central disc this is the central disc surface of the body is rarely smooth typically it is marked by symmetrically symmetrically spaced radiating grooves called ambulacera on oral side you can see these are the grooves present just like the radii that are coming out from the central disc on the oral surface these grooves are called as ambulacral groove are collectively called as ambulacera body wall consists of an outer epidermis a middle dermis and an inner lining of peritoneum so three layer of body wall epidermis followed by dermis and peritoneum endoskeleton consists of closely fitted plates forming a shell usually called theca or test or may composed of small ossicles 
small ossicles means small pieces of bones with spines covered with epidermis so this is the endoskeleton either you have the uh, closely fitted plates called the theca test or you have the pieces of bones covered over by the epidermis having spines also cavity body cavity siloam is lined by peritoneum peritoneum is the third or the inner layer of the body wall constitute the perivisceral cavity so siloam is lined by peritoneum and constitute the passive where, where, where the siloam lies the cavity around the visceral around the visceral mass or the visceral organs of the body is the siloam or the perivisceral cavity and the cavity of the water vascular system a well known system of the echinodermates that we shall discuss is the next comment that the cavity of the water vascular system is again representing the siloam and developed from embryonic or chondron so call anterocele so the siloam developed through anterocele i have already told you that the true siloam is of two types casocelous siloam or anterocelous siloam if it develops from the embryonic orchentron then it is called as anterocelous siloam now look at the water vascular system water vascular system is also called as ambulacral system it is most characteristic feature of phylum echinodermate it consists of tubes you can see here this uh, blue one this ring and then this uh, this very tube and then the few feet these tubes they form the water vascular system the above yellow one is the digestive system but below it is the water vascular system it is called water vascular system because uh, all these tubes remain filled with the water they include the podiar tube feet these are the podiar tube feet one tube feet is enlarged over here so these tube feet are podia are meant for locomotion and they usually have medriporoid medriporoid is the opening of the water vascular system to the oat side along with the along the side of the anus elementary canal is usually coiled tube extending from mouth located on oral surface to the anus on the abdominal surface you can see over here this is the anus on the abdominal surface opposite to this surface you are having the oral surface and the tube is branched highly branched you can see this is the digestive system so this includes the the length from uh, oral surface to abdominal surface circulatory or hemal or blood lacunar system is typically present excretory system is not present excretion takes place through the movement of the water from inside to the outside the body through the water vascular system nervous system without a brain they don't have brain but they have a round ring called the circumoral ring around the mouth and then the radial nerves giving to each or like the radii respiration occurs through a variety of structures like papulae you can see these are the papula so papula are present in the starfish what are the papula papula are also called as dermal branchi or skin gills they are basically the projections of the siloam on the body so on the body the cavity the body cavity the siloam is projected outside and this projection through papilla basically uh, is meant for the respiration that they will uh, the, the gases from outside the water will be diffused into the body uh, in, uh, will be diffused through the wall of the papilla into the uh, siloam present inside them because the diffusion will takes place because oxygen inside will be low as compared to the oxygen present in the water and similarly carbon dioxide present in the siloam will be high of, uh, of high concentration as compared to the outside so the carbon dioxide will be diffused over
then you may have the peristomial gills in sea urchin peristomial gill means gills in the tissue around the mouth so the gills are also present around the mouth as well sometimes the genital bursa are also present and genital bursa are present in the brittle star what are the genital bursa they are basically the invagination where they are located at the base of the arm so you have the as i have shown you in the previous slide the organism is having the arm at the base of the arm we are having an invagination this invagination is having the ciliated cells of the epidermis so by beating the cilia the water current will be regulated through this uh, depression of the invagination as a result the uh, oxygen will be diffused inside the body and the carbon dioxide will be taken out from the body so the epidermal cilia generated by ventilating current the bursa why they are called genital bursa because the bursa have the gonads on the ciliomic side of their wall so that is why they are called as a genital bursa because of their location then the fourth type of structure is the respiratory tree in holotherian what what happens that the cloaca branch out into respiratory tree the water from the anus will be taken inside into this bursa tree and will be thrown away again from the anus to outside by such by such mechanism the entering of water will bring the oxygen inside and the exit of water will take carbon dioxide outside they have poorly developed sense organs which include organs for sense for sensing the touch that is tactile organs have the chemo receptors also for detecting the chemical changes they do have the terminal tentacle present on the body which again are the respiratory are the sense organs they do have the sense organ for the light also for photoreceptor and the statocyst statocyst is this structure meant for balancing so uh, statocyst is basically the organ of balance and orientation and in small aquatic invertebrates they consist of the sensory uh, cells which gives cilia into their lumen and then they are having the uh, statolith inside once the, uh, the the animal will lose the balance the statocyst will move uh, according to balance either to this, this side or to this side which will be sensed by these cilia and the signal will be transmitted to these cells and ultimately the neurons the nerves coming and uh, um, entering these uh, cells will receive the message it accordingly the balance will be maintained they are echinodermates are used in iohs gonads large and single or multiple with or without gonoducts so all types of uh, variations are there in the reproductive system regeneration of the last part is peculiarly in the echinodermate also that means they often regenerate their last part and this is also called as asexual reproduction fertilization is external development is indirect having larval forms and larval forms are always free swimming larval forms thanks this is all about the characteristic feature of phylum echinodermate